Recently, How the World Works added a playlist entitled My Annihilation of Thunderfoot. The cute irony being that the last video in the series, that's one quarter of the entire videos, he had nothing to do with at all. Someone else made it. He has since retitled it, The Video That Thunderfoot Does Not Want You To See. Here's a word for you to get acquainted with how the world works. Plagiarism. I have several issues with the video. There is, of course, the amusing irony that How the World Works plagiarized video about the invalidity of what he cites as my ad hominem attacks would be ad hominem attacks by his own definition. You're half a step away from calling him four eyes or telling him that your dad can beat up his dad. But more than that, when in the very clip that he shows to compare my video to How the World Works, there is a clock in the corner of my video giving people an idea about the rhetoric density. He then compares this to about 15 seconds cut out of two 10-minute videos in which he finds a comparable number of derogatory terms. Many would see this form of mm, cherry-picking as intentionally misleading, as it cuts out 99% of the video and context from which it's clear why I reach the level of disdain that I have for how the world works. Allow me to make this clear. An ad hominem attack as a logical fallacy is when it is used as a substitute for an argument. Invariably, the terms that I use are derived from or are a consequence of presented arguments. And yes, I make no secret of my disdain for someone who engages in actions as anti-social as selling disinformation and conspiracy theories, especially ones which may end up affecting the future of mankind for cash. The second that North Korea got a missile and was threatening to launch it, we should have bombed the missile site. Period. I think branding this jerk as Captain Stairs a lot is both fitting and humorous under the circumstances. Similarly, Mr. Buster correctly quotes me as saying that I do not attempt to monetize the Thunderfoot channel, as this could be used as an unfair criticism from suggesting a conflict of interest or some such. And yeah, that does put a fiscal value on the level to which I honor the integrity of this channel. He then suggests that I'm a hypocrite due to my criticism of how the world works. But of course, it is an entirely fair criticism of how the world works. He is a money-grubbing subscriber whore, and the fact that I do not attempt to monetize my channel to maintain its integrity does nothing to nullify this. But let's be fair about this and watch another 30-second video that how the world works has since deleted so that we can more fully make up our mind. Hi everyone, today is the new year and I just want to thank everybody who subscribed to my new channel, How the World Works. Everyone knows that I was hoping to get around 200 subscribers by today. I got around 330. So everyone who subscribed, thanks a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, go over to How the World Works and subscribe right now. I'm going to be offering some promotional prizes for subscribers and I'm going to be creating some new videos. So you're going to want to check them out. Go over there, subscribe to How the World Works. Hope you have a good new year. And yeah, his intentions and his motives are relevant. Intentionally making money through disinformation is significantly worse than merely making money through disinformation. You clearly disagree with some of the arguments that were made. Let's take, for instance, slavery. His relation of capitalism to slavery was not only a display of his gross misunderstanding of capitalist fundamental roots, but an abject attempt to pull on the heartstrings of his viewers despite a completely irrational and non sequitur argument. With respect to slavery, I say that no, by historical observation, slavery can function perfectly happy within society if the society permits it, and it has done so for several thousand years. And yes, the American slave trade demonstrates explicitly that capitalism has no issues about slavery. To say that I misrepresented or misquoted anything here is simply a denial of reality and history. Similarly, claiming this is merely an appeal to emotion is just not true. Its effects are directly relevant today. A brief history of the United States. About 250 years ago, the country was founded with a declaration of independence, after which, for about 100 years, slavery and the slave trade were acceptable and profitable 
in the United States. And yes, profitability is the only metric of success in capitalism. And yes, there are exceptionally brutal elements to this. Look at the practice of slave breaking. For obvious reasons, slavery was financially more expedient for menial work than employing free men. About 150 years ago, there was the Civil War when it was decided that slavery was really not terribly ethical. And yeah, that's right, people fought a war primarily over this. Then, 50 years ago, there was the Civil Rights Movement, which finally got equal rights for blacks. And even today, the socioeconomic scars of this history are graphically visible in the United States. And I speak with the experience of one who has seen more of it than most. You can still walk in many areas of America, from a white neighborhood to a black neighborhood, and watch the quality of housing drop and the number of people on the streets increase as their wealth decreases. It's visually conspicuous. The only way you can not see it is denial. Well, does anyone have any comments on the effectiveness of the healing of these socioeconomic scars in a primarily capitalistic society over the past quarter of a millennium? It's a genuine question with a genuine follow-up. Is the status quo acceptable? And if not, do you have any proposals for the enhanced healing of these scars? Sure, you can say, well, they have equal rights now, but metaphorically, it's closer to breaking both of someone's legs and then saying, what are you complaining about? You are now allowed to compete on level terms with everyone else in the races. My sentiment is similar to that expressed by Colin Powell about the Iraq war. It's pottery barn rules. You break it, you own it. That is to say, you are responsible for it. Irrespective, to a degree, the argument of the balance between socialism and capitalism is largely superseded by a factor that is more dominant than either of these. Knowledge. Knowledge and society are the future. Indeed, the interplay between knowledge, society, and the advancement of civilization was next on the cutting board before I got <clears throat> distracted by Captain Stairs a lot. Thankfully, how the world works has effectively scurried away with his tail between his legs. In rather a timely fashion, I may add, as I have real-world commitments for the best part of the next three weeks or so, and really can't do anything anyway. But after that, say anything demonstrably stupid, and your ass is toast. But let's summarize the similarities between the uh, poster boy for conspiracy stupidity, that's uh, PCS2, and his global warming conspiracy, and creationists. Both show contempt for the most qualified people in the world when they feel educated opinions on their subject. Both are happy to quote mine in order to misrepresent and mischaracterize what they perceive as their opposition. Both think that the science that built the civilization they live in and are utterly dependent upon is made up of some evil conspiracy out to get them. Both have no issues with plagiarism. Ad hominem attacks, of course, and here you will notice that the attack on the person is a substitute for the argument. Answer, you work for the United Nations and you're a leftist. And if you want to hear the word from another leftist and viral Marxist, just listen to James Hansen from NASA. He's back at it again, even though his old boss said he should have been fired. James Hansen claims that the democratic process is not working to fight global warming. Hey James, the reason why the democratic process is not working to fight global warming is because the majority of people are realizing that you and Al Gore are charlatans. Both demonstrate their lack of character and moral fiber in that YouTube gives them the ability to censor comments and both zealously engage in the activity. And of course both, when all other options have been exhausted, simply tip the board over and declare victory. So experts, now that I went through every one of your arguments and completely annihilated them. Regrettably, how the world works. Sorry, PCS2. That's not how the world works. Annihilating someone's argument is not a criterion that is simply achieved by declaring it. Indeed, the mere fact that you need to make such a statement seems to suggest that you do not think that this is self-evident from your argument. 
In that respect, it's more like Fox News claiming to be fair and balanced. Allow me to summarise PCS2. Braying about how smart you think you are does little to add to your credibility when you are categorically wrong on multiple elementary levels, especially when you further compound your errors by further attempting to justify your ignorance by a variety of deeply unconvincing excuses, and then finally claim that factual veracity is not important as it's only YouTube and who the heck cares, and then ultimately, when all other possible options have been explored, you correct your mistake. To summarize the summary, the knowledge of mankind has guardians to stop antisocial vermin such as yourself from pissing in the fountain of knowledge. To summarize the summary of the summary, keep polluting science, swine. Your bitch ass is mine, sunshine.